This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. One of the best things you can learn if you're into video is color grading and correction. So in this video, we're gonna learn the basics of DaVinci Resolve. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So DaVinci Resolve is one of the best pieces of software for color grading and correction out there. I've been using it for several years now and I use it on every single project when I color grade and correct my footage. And this is software that I highly recommend and the best part about it, it is free. So you can go visit Blackmagic Design's website and you can download DaVinci Resolve for absolutely free and that's awesome. But this video is aimed for people who are new at DaVinci Resolve and want to take their color correction and grading to the next level. So this is gonna be an awesome opening guide to DaVinci Resolve, specifically with color grading and correction. So let's go ahead and jump into our video and let's get started. So before we jump into color grading, I need to talk about the editing workflow between your editor and Resolve. Uh, I would search up a round trip workflow between your editor and Resolve tutorial. Uh, this way you'll know how to bring in your entire edit from Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro or any editor over to Resolve so you can color grade it. That's very essential because you can take your edited project from any editor and grade it inside of DaVinci and that's really what DaVinci is used for is color grading even though now it's primarily an awesome editing program as well but I still use Adobe Premiere. So if you want to learn more about how to take your edit from your editing program to Resolve go ahead and search that up. So when we're ready to grade our clip we'll click on the color tab here and this will bring us over to the color portion of uh, DaVinci. So one thing I like to do is come here to the top and uncheck the highlighted clips button here so we get a bigger view of our image. One thing I like to do is go to workspace, go to video scopes and check on on. Now if you now if you have a dual monitor, this is great because you can just put this on the other monitor but and you can open this up and you can see all your video scopes. I'll make a full tutorial on how these video scopes work probably next week if you're interested, but this is good to have. But if you understand these scopes, this is how you bring this up. So DaVinci Resolve works in nodes. So your bottom of your layers would be from left to right. So the more nodes I add, you can see that this is going to be the last node and it's going to take priority over everything. So if you want to create new nodes, you go up to color nodes and you can add serial nodes. And these are called serial nodes. And if you remember the shortcut, you can add as many as you need. So the first thing you should do in your first node is balance out your image as far as exposure goes. But you know when you're working with log clips, I think it's a little bit harder to see from an eye perspective to see where your exposure's at. Now, of course, you can use scopes, but I'm not going to be focusing so much on scopes on this tutorial. I need to make a full tutorial on that. But we'll come here and we'll go up to color nodes and we'll add you know just a few serial nodes here. So we'll add four serial nodes. And we'll come here to the third node here just by clicking on it. And we'll come here to the contrast, which is right down here. And we'll increase our contrast to like 1.4 or whatever, just enough to see what's happening to the shot. And now we have an idea of what this shot looks like. We can see that it's a little bit warm and we can see where the exposure is at viewing it by eye. And of course we can see our waveform over here. So now we'll go to our first node and we'll take a look at the exposure. So I definitely think this clip is pretty much in the ballpark where the exposure needs to be, but maybe I'll bring down the gamma by a little bit because typically the skin tones lie in the gamma. So this is really where you want to adjust for your skin. So you can see as I bring it down, um, Ashley's skin gets a little bit darker and you know that looks really good. You know, depending on how the shot's exposed, this is really where you want to balance out your skin tones and get your exposure right. So I think this is a good starting ground for our exposure. Um, and of course you have offset here, which will just shift the entire image exposure, which is important to do. I'll just keep that at nothing. And if you want to darken down the black areas of the image, you can bring down the lift by a little bit. So that's essentially how you can balance out your exposure by using the lift gamma gain wheels here. Now, of course, you can use the curves to do this. Um, there's a few different techniques of using curves. I'm not a big fan of using curves for uh, balancing out my shot. So we know the first node is about balancing out your image and node three should be about the contrast of your image. Node two is about balancing out the white balance. So what we can do to update the white balance is we can click on this drop down of primary wheels and go to primary bars. And we have a number of options in here. So we got lift gamma gain again, but there's a few other tools here that can allow you to easily white balance your image. So under lift here, there is a pick black point. So I can say her hair is the black point of the shot and it'll balance out the exposure and the color. You know, of course that's what you can do. And, and then we come here to the gain, you know, window here and we can say, this is the white point. I'm not a big fan of letting DaVinci Resolve do this automatically. So those tools are available for you. And there's even a white balance, you know, icon down here in the corner and you can find something that should be white. So I'll say maybe that's white and it balances out your image for you. Once again, I'd rather do this manually. So 
under the scopes here we come here to parade and we can see where our white balance is at and the goal here is to kind of match each of these you know scopes you know the rgb up together so you can see the blues a little bit dragging down below here and the reds are punching up a little bit higher than blue so this is really where you want to balance things out I'm, I don't really focus specifically on doing that perfectly. So what we can do here is come here to the gamma window here and we can, you know, start pulling down on some of these parameters here. So I'll come here to blue, pull this down, see how it kind of shifts down the blue here. So perhaps we can just keep that where it needs to be and we can pull down the greens by a little bit. And the image is a little bit more red and then we can pull down the red by a touch. And now the image is a lot more balanced out and then maybe I'll come here to the lift, see what happens to the blues. Image is a little more green. Eh. Maybe we can pull down on the greens by a bit, pull down the reds. And, you know, we're getting really close. I don't think we're going to be able to pull that top part off there, but we can take a look. And then we can reach the gain. See, we can pull the top part of this scope up, and we can do that, but then the rest of the image gets blue because we're pulling up, you know, more of the areas here. So we go back to the gamma blue, bring this down. And, you know, we can try our best to definitely work and balance this out as best as we can. Um, like I said, I don't like to focus too much on this. I just tried to get it in the ballpark and get our image as clean as possible. So now a little before and after this image was definitely a little bit on the warmer red side, which is fine, you know, since that's kind of look that I want to go for, but here is a color corrected version of our clip and everything's a lot more neutral. So, you know, once again, this is not 100% perfect, but I am using a color calibrated, you know, HP dream color monitor. So I can get away with just looking at the image a little bit more, but this is definitely in a much better ballpark where we need our image to be. We have our third note here where we adjusted the contrast, right? So the reason why we do it this way is because typically the first things you want to do is expose your shot perfectly, then rebalance the image, and then do your contrast. So I personally like adding my contrast after I did my balancing of my shot, but it needs to be the first thing that I do so I can visually see what I'm doing with the exposure and with the color. So that's why it's third in line, and we already have it done. So I'm going to keep it here, um, and we'll move on to our fourth note. So you can take a look at looking at our waveform here that there's nothing here that is black it's kind of at 100 IRE and like I said I'll talk more about the scopes next week and one thing I want to talk about is how to make you know black black right so a note for what we can do is click on the log here go to the drop down go to log and there's a wheel here called shadow and we can bring this down and now we have the opportunity to bring down our black level and of course you can do the same thing with the highlights if you want to bring the whites up but you know, not a big fan of bringing the highlights up as on most clips. You know, definitely can see it adds a lot more contrast in the shot, but it's not, you know, contrasting the mid-tones of the shot. We're just taking the black levels and the white levels and pushing them further apart. So this is a really cool thing to do if you really want to push the contrast without actually messing up the skin tones of your shot. So now we'll go ahead and start grading this image. So this is our color correction and we are officially done. And before we jump further into our video, I want to talk to you about Envato Elements. You know what I dislike as a content producer? Having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage, music for my videos, After Effects templates, and graphic design templates for my business. With Envato Elements, I can save a ton of money for my business by spending only $16.50 a month where I can download unlimited music, After Effects templates, stock footage, and so much more for my business needs. If you want to learn how you can save countless time and money, be sure to check our links in the video description, which will take you over to Envato Elements. So now we can move on to color grading, and there's so much stuff that we can do, and this is really where the tutorial gets really interesting. So I'm going to do my normal method of creating one more serial node, and then going up to color, go to nodes, and add a layer node. So you'll get a node beneath our 05 serial node. And what we can do here is grab the you know qualifier, and we can separate the skin from the image. So we come here, select our skin just by clicking on it. Then we click on this wand icon right here and we see that our skin is isolated. We can add this quantifier plus icon and we can start clicking areas that were not in the selection. So you can see some of her shirts in here and her face is mostly selected and that's all that matters. So we'll come here and increase the blur radius to about a hundred. We can increase the clean white and the clean black by a touch. Then we come here to the saturation low here and we can bring this up and see if we can deselect some of these areas, see if we can deselect our shirt by the qualifier minus tool and that deselects our shirt. Great. Maybe increase the blur radius by a little bit more. Okay. So let's just say this is good enough. So we have our skin isolated and now we can go over here to the vector scope and we see where our skin tones are at and it's pretty much in a decent spot where it needs to be. So perhaps we don't even need to touch this, but so what we can do here is come to our primary wheels window 
and we can adjust the gamma of the skin. So we can you know, darken it down by a little bit. Depending on your footage, you can start tearing things up, but we could darken her skin down by a touch, right? Let me just deselect this here. So we could darken her skin. We can change the, you know, color of it. Um, and of course, what we want to do is kind of keep your vector scope um, on that skin tone line. If you don't see the skin tone line, come here to the settings and you can check on show skin tone indicator. And this will be good for still correction, but this is how I grade a little bit. So kind of get that skin where we need it to be. And there's certain rules and I'll talk about this in another tutorial. Just a little before and after. You see we made a big impact on her skin. And the best part about it, her skin is deselected from the rest of the image. So that means we can come here to Node 05 and come into a primary wheels and we can make the image a little bit more on the blue side if we want. We can desaturate the image and it's only affecting the rest of the image and not her skin. You know, and obviously now we have some great color contrast, but let's go ahead and start punching more things into here. So we'll go ahead and create a new node here. So this is a new serial node. And what I like to do is come here to the curves window and we'll come here to the hue versus sat saturation specifically right and what we can do is we can come here and select our shirt and we'll add a point here and we can bring this up and see maybe we can move this line over so we make sure we're not selecting her skin and we can also come here and get some of these leaves in here select that green we can saturate some of this up we can expand it by a little bit and this is how we can have some really cool control over different aspects of our shot so now let's talk about using the wheels for an actual color grade so come here and create another serial node and we'll come here to log now this is a really cool window for you know dialing in specific looks. So we come here to midtone and we can you know, move this up and you see not much happens, right? So we can come here, turn it off. Image gets a little bit more warm. But what we do here is come here to the low range and high range down here and we can bring down the low range, bring up the high range. You can see we're baking more of that warm look into the highlights and shadows. So we can come here to shadow, make this a little bit more on the blue or green or warm side and we can easily control that color grade. So it's very subtle. I don't know how well you can see that. You know, we can easily control where our grade is blending into. You know, definitely adds a little bit more of an interesting gray to it. So we made our shadows a little bit on the bluer side and we made our midtones a little bit more warmer and you can just adjust where you want that to be. So a little before and after, we were able to bake in a, a little bit more of a legitimate grade. Finish all tutorial, we need to talk about some of the problems we just created. So first of all, her hair is blue. Okay, and that's very amateur. We don't want blacks to be a different color. We want blacks to be black and we want whites to be white. So we want to be able to fix that issue and maybe talk about saturation a little bit. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about uh, saturation. So in my opinion, this image is a little bit too saturated. Maybe it's fine for what we're doing. So we'll come back here to our primary wheels and there's a saturation icon here and bring the saturation by a little bit. Okay, so that definitely you know, contain some of those colors a little bit. Then we can also click on two and we have some other wheels in here that we didn't talk about. So if you want to make the image a little bit more sharp, there's something called mid-tone detail and this sharpens up the mid-tones by a little bit. So you can, you know, de-sharpen images or sharpen them by a touch this way. I'm not a big fan of ever touching this, but you know, something for you to take a look at. Another thing you can do to, to increase your sharpness is that there's an actual a blur uh, window here. Click on that and you can come here and bring down the blur values and you see it gets the image a lot more sharp. So it's actually not a bad idea to sometimes decrease this by a little bit, the radius, and makes the image just a lot more, you know, a little bit more sharp, but don't do, go too crazy with it. All right, and to take out the blues and just balance out this image as much as possible, we'll go ahead and create our last serial node and we'll come over here, go back to the curves window and we'll come here to custom and we'll click on Luma versus saturation. And what we'll do here is add a point down here where there's a black little icon and also a white icon. We'll add those points right there in our curve. And we'll come here to the last point here and we'll bring this all the way down. And now just a little before and after, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but just take a look at the top part of Ashley's hair. It's definitely a little bit more black and takes out that blue. And of course you can do that for the highlights as well. So if there's any you know, color in the white areas of the image, uh, it's now gonna just be white. All right, so I'm gonna come here and take a look at just our color correction. So this was our initial color correction. You know, things were in a good ballpark. You know, they were kind of still a little bit wild for what we were doing. There's no separation between our, you know, background and our talent, Ashley. And with our color grade, we were able to separate Ashley from the background and manipulate the image in any way that we want. And that's 
how you can build a very powerful color grade for your project. So of course you don't have to use all these tools in every situation. I don't use all these tools in every situation. Sometimes I'll just go and do the log color grade. Sometimes I will separate and not do the color grade. You know, perhaps sometimes I won't do the hue versus saturation. So there's a lot that you can think about when you're doing your color grade and it's essentially the tools that you need in order to build powerful color correction and grading. So I hope now that you've had the opportunity to learn a little bit more about correction and grading. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We do post several post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.